Summer Shines and we have a dream of moving ourselves, our two kiddos and our two kitties onto a boat and doing the Great American Loop. Ah. But first, we gotta find a boat. So welcome to episode 15 of... V B S. <laughs> I giggle every time you do that. Okay, so I know what we're looking at today because it was my request. Uh, we. Well, we started off when we thought we were going to do the loop. The first boat we were looking at was the Hatteras, correct? Actual first, when we thought about oh, doing the, the loop, Chris Craft. it was the Chris Craft 50 or 501, I always get confused, Constellation. And we were like, that's the perfect boat. 50 feet, it's still a great boat, aft cabin. It's just really old. Well, it's old and it's just, I don't think, as seaworthy as some of the things that we need. But it's still a fantastic, fantastic option. So then we said, all right, well, what would be the next level up? A little bit more money, a little bit more size, and we got onto the Hatteras product. Yep. And that was a Hatteras, Hatteras 53 motor yacht. And you have to define it by motor yacht because if you get into the Hatteras non-motor yacht, you're looking at the convertibles, which is offshore fishing rigs, and that's not good for livability. Okay. So we looked at the 53, which, is, which was started in 1971. Okay. And made Went into production until 1989. So just as we can determine. Well, I, the internet doesn't lie. So, but that's a good long run. Uh, it's a li it's the layout that we love, where you have the Tudor would be up front for us. Yeah, there's a stateroom in the bow, and then there's two staterooms. And in between that is the galley, the dinette, the engines, and then it's kids and us. So that's nice spatial differentiation on the boat like you know just room for that person to do their thing and us to do our thing that's the 53 hatteras but in 1985 they introduced the 54 hatteras which was revolutionary it's basically the same thing but it's wider than the 53 and obviously a foot longer and it's got higher headroom and a bigger engine room so it's basically the and same it was boat. flip-flop it was like mirror flip-flop yeah it's and basically the, the same boat but better and the flybridge was much better. Yeah, so once we discovered the 54, we, the 53, even though you like the wooden doors on the back, but. I think the 53 is a prettier boat. If you just look at the lines of it, which right here, see, <laughs> look at that. I mean, that's just a beautiful classic <sighs> boat. When you think of Hatteras, you think of this boat. And then the 54, you know, definitely more 80s looking. Oh, I love the 80s. I'm all about retro 80s. And then there's also a 56, which is basically the exact same thing as the 54, but with two more feet kind of in the... So once they go, they go 56, I think they go 58, and then they go 60, 63. And it's basically the same boat, but they made some more space in the master. And then they just kind of lengthen things, but... You didn't get any additional features yeah. or rooms or space. So it really, for us, I think the max we could go to anyway was 56, because then the draft gets too big. We have deep. we've gotten on a 53 and a 54, mm -hmm. and we've done an actual walkthrough, which we... It's a different video. You've done you, two 53s. You can go see... One 56 it, but. and one 54. Yeah, we've looked at a number of... We've physically gotten on a number of Hatteras's, but we thought it'd be fun to do a virtual walkthrough and talk about the Hatteras product and the 54, which in my mind, for our needs, is the best. The biggest drawback is they're old, so there's question as to whether or not we'll be able to get them insured. Well, probably won't. So then at that point, you're just self-insuring and, you know, crossing your fingers that the Detroit diesels don't die on you. But then, you know, some people say... But does say, insurance cover Detroit, does it cover your engines? It doesn't. No, no. So, so that doesn't matter. mute issue. But I'll tell you, you talk to Hatteras owners or non-Hatteras owners and everybody says the holes are thick. They overbuilt them. The term battle wagon, a lot of people use. I mean, it's a good product. Let's okay. look at this one. It is a 1987. This is a 54-foot motor yacht. So this is two years into production. What was the last year they made the 54 or the 56? I don't know. We're gonna have to research that. This one's in Charleston, South Carolina for $239,000. And... And it's 1987. Okay, let's look at the specs. I have, when you go to the specs, 54 feet, nine inches, a beam of 17 foot <gasps> six. I love a beamy bow. Which on, this isn't a short boat, but on a shorter boat, and a, I mean, it's as thick as it is wide almost. 
minimum draft four foot six, I think. So that means minimal. we can get to basically five feet. And if you haven't watched any of the other videos, we have to be under 19 feet, six inches above the water. You can't be any taller than that to get under the lowest fixed bridge. And we can't be any deeper than six feet under the water, ideally less than five feet. We would really preferably be under four feet six. Yeah. So this is, this is fine, this works. Yeah. This checks the boxes on the air height and the draft. 70,000 pound displacement. So that's a pretty heavy boat. If you look at some other 54 foot boats, they're gonna be like in the 50,000 pound. Which is good for stability, bad for fuel economy. Let's see, total power, we got 1,400 horsepower. So that's twin 700 horsepower Detroit diesels. And those are the 8V92Ts. Those are the bulletproof engines that everybody loves. You know, part of the thing with the insurance is that the engines are getting so complicated that a lightning strike takes out your engine. Oh, and all the electronics. Yeah, so this a lightning strike on, on this boat, it's kind of like, what happened? Well, what was that? <laughs> What's up for no lightning strikes? Fuel tank, 800 gallons, so that's a lot. Holding tanks, 118 gallons. Uh, you know, we looked at a, well, no, we looked at a Viking Princess at 50 gallons. Yeah, that was a problem. But I love that boat, the Viking Princess. And it's three heads and three staterooms. There she is, classic. Let's look at Hatteras. it. What we love is back area, aft area, great for painting and for hanging out. Mark's an artist and he's still going to be painting. He has to still be working while we're on the boat, so we gotta have a place for him to paint. Yep. I can do my work anywhere. And a full walk around, covered, which, you know, is hard to find. So on a rainy day, you're handling lines at a, at a uh, lock. That helps, and then you got pilot doors on either side. So a lot of accessibility outside the boat, and nice, nice wide walk talking. around. Okay. Okay, we're at the helm. What I love about these Hatteras are the stand-up helm with the big destroyer wheel, and when you stand there, I mean, yeah. The you dashboard like is about up to here. A salty dog. Yeah, I just feel, like, feel, feel like you can, feel like you're in control. Can we get a faux parrot to put on your shoulder when you're standing there? So this an eye patch. <laughs> you're not seeing my humor. More of a sailing ship than a motor yacht. Oh, well, so I'll be in my white dinner jacket. So the electronics on this are pretty sparse, but they put them up here. So here's a North Star, which we've discussed is a defunct North Star brand of chart plotter, but, but it's still fine. It. But nothing here, look. That's like just old school gauges. I'm like, I love the white helm chair that seats to. Well, it's not a chair. This is a built in sofa settee thing. But that like, seats you're steering to. with your feet when you're just kind of cruising along. Yeah, which is great. Because when you're on autopilot, for, you know, 85% of the time, you're on autopilot. That just looks watching super things comfy. Goodbye. I like it. Nice big wide windows. You can see the world. Now, here's one of the faults with this boat for you is that this is your access up to the fly bridge. I sound like I'm a 90 year old grandma. You don't, I have, don't have an, have an anterior crochet ligament. Some other stuff going on in my knee, which is great, except for on ladders like that. Okay, Done but here's where this boat shines. Having been on one, this is just like. So much space, right? Okay, well we should clarify, it's the space that shines. I, you know, we love a makeover, so whatever boat we get, we'll put our own aesthetic touch on. But look at all that raw space to make over. Yeah, so you walk, you're just for bearings, you're walking behind the helm here, and then you round here. All of this is storage here for games and whatever for the kids. This is a wet bar. There's your ice maker. So this is like, you know, party central. I mean, I know we've looked at way more expensive boats that are way newer, but the space on this boat is awesome. You can't beat this or that Viking 55 as far as oh, yeah. space. Why isn't anyone making a new boat with this much space? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, and if you know of some boat of that, that has this much space, but it's new, let us know. All right, okay. and the master. Which is in the very back of the boat. Mm -hmm. And we know this, it's got tons of storage on the sides. It's got a great full length closet for my captains and moves. Tons of storage. Uh, it's only these upper ones that are functional. The lower ones are access to Yeah, but it's still got storage thing. on both sides. Okay, so this is the area that we love. Yeah, so this is aft deck. Huge, I mean, look at that space. Great vista over the water. Uh, I've seen these are removable panels so it makes it a lot more airy but it also makes it feel more built in so either one this is this can all be zipped up this ice and glass one of your 
complaints with this particular model is the accessibility to yeah. the swim platform or you know we're going to go on shore and we're loading up the tender and you got bicycles it's getting tricky. them from this little thing down the, the ladder it's literally a ladder is not the best we've kind of devised if we were to get one of these uh we've seen some where they got a custom staircase on the back down to the swim platform. Yeah. But this boat does not have a sexy stern. I love the, the back of the boats when they've got little stairs coming down and they've you got a great- You could do that like that. It's just money. Time and money, baby. Yeah, so the, the back of this boat, while it's great for painting, is not as sexy and as functional as some. Now we could have built-ins made to put a table and um, dining area back there, which we would most likely do. But not just painting, living. Coming out here and eating, the kids playing games out here. Yeah, outside living space. Huge space. space. And then these wing doors, so if it's windy, you close these and it's pretty well protected from the weather. And you, these don't open all the way, they only open, you know, two wide, one wide. But that, just That's great, tons great of space. space. Up on the fly bridge. This is where they changed from the 53 to the 54. They added the seating back here, which is good and functional. And put Dab a, it back here. I put a fixed dining. Pedestal table. Yeah. Adjustable. Oh, looky there. So when your tender's not there, you can put those there. So this looks like a full-time liveaboard currently, because you're not taking it out to sea with any of this stuff like the nope. back. I always worry about liveaboards because they're not being run. But and this, this is where the boat shines again for the kids. It's so great. It's a great room for our kiddos. There's there's drawers underneath each bed. There's a full closet. Um, and the kiddos have their own bathroom. Across the hall. It's not ensuite. But, but still, they can easily pop over. There's a ensuite for the master, there's a bathroom across the hall for the kiddos, and then the front stateroom has its own head as well. So everybody has their own bathroom, which I think would be nice, especially for our tutor who will be with us. And each bed has four doors underneath, they share one of these two, and they each get a locker up here, yeah, and I then mean, hanging clothes right here. It's great. All in the same room. Yeah, and in contrast, so many of the, of the boats have just two twin beds basically in a closet and there's no room for kids stuff. They need their toys, they need their clothes, they need to be, they're living on this boat. So that's a great kid bedroom. Engine room, so the setup here is a port and starboard engine with through the gangway through the middle, the hallway, uh, which I love because it's easily accessible. I don't have to crawl down anywhere. I literally open up a door like a closet door and walk like in. You're in the house when you go into your yeah. engine room. <laughs> Imagine a, a hallway in your house and two of the doors just go to engines. And there are two doors each. There's, there's, you know, there's the front of the engine and then there's the back of the engine. Um, this one looks pretty clean. This Beautiful. is the water heater. Most of them are all rusty. My only concern with that is that when you come out of working on an engine, you are greasy sometimes. So you just gotta. But you like you gotta the be, smell. You gotta be a clean grease monkey. Okay, there's a dinette. Love a good dinette. It connected to the galley and you access this by, here's a half spiral staircase. You're coming down from the helm in the salon, down into the galley and dinette, which we go back and forth on. I love that it's separate and it's almost like this whole kind of family dining experience. Mm -hmm. it, you'd think it'd be dark, but it's not well, terribly dark. Well, they painted this one white. That's nice. I'm not, oh, I love the marble. I'm just confused as to the placement. They went all the way up with it. Uh, so I would, our personal preference would not have been to put it here. But I love the marble, but, and it's got a white countertop. It's been redone, like I would. And we yeah. would like to, you know, we've always said it'd be fun to redo a boat interior. This is, you know, it's already been done. So it doesn't feel well, we sacrilegious to change it to a little put bit. our own stamp, stamp on, it. on it. But I think the functionality of this is great. I mean, yeah. that's, just, that's like an apartment kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah, it needs a dishwasher and an oven. That must be a convection. I'd put a, a, have a more of a built-in look on that fridge. Mm -hmm. But this is so resonant. You got cabinets, cabinets, cabinets. Now we need to put in a dishwasher, like you said. But forward of the galley is where our tutor would be, or friends came and the tutor went off. You have, you know, Friends, two berths, and this is en suite, and the washer dryer is in the same space. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, I guess it was the 56 we looked at had it. Oh, that's another difference in case you're curious about the difference between the 54 and the 56. The 54 
has the kids' stateroom is back mm. by the master. On the 56, the kids' stateroom is on the other side of the engine. And as a protective mama, I prefer to have the kids' stateroom close, not to have the engines between us. So that's that's a big difference between the 54 and 56. Mama bear here. Okay, so that's a great a great setup for having a nanny with us, yep. a tutor with us. Rotate. That's the laundry. washer dryer, and it's old school 1980s, 3,000 watts. Lives forever. So, I love this. And I love the bow on this boat. It's wide. It's safe. You got a nice curb here. Yeah, it's I love got the a curb. Beautiful teak railing. You got a bow sprit that's up. The kids can stand on that. Uh, we went and looked at one in Chattanooga, and just it felt good to be on this mm -hmm. space. So this is the Flybridge Helm, looks like they've updated it. More electronics up here than down in the lower helm. That's interesting. And, okay, oh, so that's this underneath is- underneath the kitchen? Yeah, the under galley. the galley is where the generator and air conditioning units are. And a groovy toolbox. Okay, so it's got a gen set. It's an Onan that came with the boat. This is another example of a great boat to, I don't think you would totally get rid of the generator, but one of our goals would be to make a silent yacht, our own silent yacht. So if we put some solar panels up there and either tap them into the existing batteries or add some batteries, our goal would be to be at anchor. Be as solar as possible. And be using battery power that we recharge every day when we're underway or at at anchor and not have to use the generator. That'd be awesome. Now, I don't, it's not going to work for air conditioning in Florida. You, they just haven't gotten there yet. You sure? Them. Yeah. This is the... Master or That's kids the, yes, head. I There's so many. There are three of them. It's hard to tell. And okay. Then, the hallway. Those two doors with the portholes are the engine room doors. So you can look in and see what's going on. And to me, this is a small thing, but this is, you know, this is space on a rainy day when we're at anchor. Kids could oh, set up a, a, a hot course. wheels track. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, That's... it's just more space. When we're going to be on such small space, potentially for three adults and the two kids. Yeah, but I did have a slight panic. We were looking at one boat and there was extra people in there and everybody was coming, following us. And I that was on the 53. I had a claustrophobia panic. Here's the footage right and, here. And it feels claustrophobic. I'm feeling claustrophobic. There it is. And part of it is, I think, because we're so not used to being close to people, that having people I'm not around near me freaked me out. Yeah. And that could be part of like a pandemic hangover. I get that. But the, uh, now I have this. That's why our tutor is going to be like four foot six. <laughs> no, she's going to be whoever she is, some person that she'll we meet in the perfect. future. She'll or be he. amazing. Or he. Here's another thing. Well, you saw you. These are the port lights. You look into the engine room, and this one here, you look into the generator area. But these have little turns on them, so if there is a fire, you don't have to open the door. You open that port. You open that, and you stick the fire extinguisher in there and you put out the fire, but there's also an automatic fire system on the boat too. Oh, but that's I just the cool. I love that you know these facts. Random things that Mark keeps in his brain. Uh, uh, sure. Master? This particular one, I like the seagrass. Uh -huh, I nice. like the wood. I like the marble. faux marble. They've, they've updated it. Up that's a new shower door. door. I like that. Yep. This one's had some upgrades. I wonder what they're covering up here. It's gotta be a bunny pad. There's usually not one. I don't think maybe there is. Drawback to this boat, shore cables. There is no Glendinning reel. There is a, nowhere a, to a, store. A Glendinning? There is no. What's a Glendinning? A Glendinning reel is a electric roller that rolls uh, in the shore power into the inside of the boat. See. There's not even any place to store it. It's almost like there was a Hatteras where they went, moment where they went, we forgot about the shore power. <laughs> Seriously? So that's I think a that's why. Pain in the butt. Well, I think that's why a lot of the um, on the bow you have those lockers that are also benches. Oh, people. I put think their that's shore where power. people store it. But that is, I mean, that's a pain in the butt. To, those things are I heavy. I like to be able to go. E yeah. And it, it. That's a big negative on the day-to-day -day operation of this boat. That's going to get really old. Done here is they just assume they're always going to keep it there, and then for um, the length that they need to get to the shore, the average length they do that. That's not real sexy. It's not. I mean, it's, it's not. super efficient. But once again, I think this is a liveaboard situation. Maybe. 
and there's no grill. This is a magma grill. We've kind of, after looking at all those boats, a flybridge grill. Don't know why they always think we need a grill on the flybridge. With the heat shield? With the mirror heat shield. <laughs> there's another engine. Panels. Okay, keep going, babe. Raycor, I saw it. I saw it. Um, uh, that's a stable. So this one has stabilizers. I'm so glad you know that. Okay, so powder 54. We yes, no, maybe. I can't. Yeah, yes, no, maybe. I can't say no on it because the space is so great. I'm not saying a heck yes. Let's put an offer in on it because it's so old. Mm -hmm. So I think. All the Hatteras's need to be on the definite maybe list. Here's the way I look that we would get a Hatteras. We throw caution to the wind on insurance. We are going to assume that if we sink the boat, we are out Lost. that money. Now some some policies I've looked at that are just liability, they do cover for salvage, but, well, but it's the liability. We but only have. up to the value of the boat. So that means to retrieve a sunken boat, I think it's gonna cost more than Or if it damages something. a reef. I mean, there's so many liability issues. Yeah. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is I'm, I, I've got to be mentally prepared that there's going to be a fix-it job for the day. I think any boat's going to have that. So yes, no, maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay. I mean, if the right one comes along, the space is so great, the money is just, it's almost, it's a lot easier, it's a than, lot a, easier than the more to expensive deal with. new boats. Yeah, now you, you might sit on that boat for a year plus to sell it. Because if we can't insure it, the people who buy it from us can't insure it. So it's a definite They also maybe. can't get financing. So you start looking at things like that for this type of boat, and as no matter how great the interior is, the other it, factors come into it play. It becomes more complicated. So thankfully, we don't need to buy a boat until next fall. We are still looking to find our perfect boat. So if you have any suggestions, we love getting your feedback, comments. I mean, some of you are making us die laughing in your comments. It's <laughs> awesome. It's so good. Anyway, thank you. And if you like all this, like and subscribe. And you can Do a little like and subscribe. If you like the logo, oh, here we go. shameless promotion, go to theboomershines.com and you can click on shop and check yeah. out the gear there. And you can follow us on Instagram, the Boomer Shines, for our daily nonsense, which is a lot more of this. Man, cheesy plugs everywhere. Hey, thanks for following and Shine watching. On. Shine on. V. V.